Hello and welcome to Infinity. On the subject of retouching, typically of portrait and particularly the face and then specifically the eye, there's a lot of things that can be done there and there are a lot of good videos out there which explain elements of this. However, what I'm trying to do is to fill out and do the complete picture because there are a number of things which aren't covered elsewhere. So this is a series of videos which cover editing the eye in full detail. This video I'm going to look at the, the details of what exactly are those things and then we're going to look at some examples in another video and get into the actual editing and the very specific methods, in fact the multiple methods you can use for doing different things. So let's start off. So let's take ourselves an eye. Here we go, this is a vertical slice through it. We've got the lens at the front of the eye here. There's the iris and here's the retina. And say that eye is looking at a camera over here because the camera works very much like this because the camera's got a lens, it's got an iris in here through set the aperture and it's got a sensor at the back. So let's have ourselves a light source which is out here and then the light hits the subject here and bounces back and is picked up on the retina. And in fact the reverse is happening as well within the camera, but let's look at what the eye is doing. We also get the light itself can hit the front of the lens here and bounce back as well. So you get the light appearing in the image. This is a catch light. Also you can get these, the picture of the, the camera itself can literally bounce off so you see a a reflection of the whole scene. You typically will see the photographer or whatever is behind them, particularly when they're lighter. You can get the light here, bounces around inside the eye and comes out the other side, and often in a, just a, like a little curve at the bottom where it's lighter, and that's the highlight. And you can also get, if you got over here, if you're doing in a studio, it might be a reflector or a modifier of some sort, or it could even be a wall. So what happens there is that the light bounces off this and lights the other side of the subject here. So you get, this is not completely in darkness, this side. However, it's also going to bounce off the eye as well. And that little light in there is called a kicker, because this can be called a kicker, if it's, particularly if it's a light in itself. But it's much weaker than the other thing, so you may or may not see it. So we got those four pieces of light that may appear when we look at an eye. So a bit of psychology, what do we seek in the eye we, when we look at other people? We look for safety, we want to see that it's safe to be with a person, that they're not unwell, so signs of health can be significant. We want to check out if they're angry. And also we're interested in whether there is a status thing to be concerned of. Are they an important person? Are they powerful? Or are we more powerful than them? So how do we interact with them? We look for signs in the eye for that. Most significantly, we look for connection. So, and in particular with that, the evolutionary principle of looking for mates and friends and so on. And finally, there's the status thing, which again links up to that state to safety, as we just said. So within the connection, we look for fecundity, which basically means, can I have babies with this other person? And there are signs of that. So, for example, we look for signs of youth. And this is how we define attractiveness. Attractiveness is built into us to look, as so we say, yeah, young people are more attractive. Well, you know, a number of us do. And the reason is because they look like they're easier to have babies with. And uh, health is similarly. You know, if you, are, you don't want to get too close to a person who's not healthy. And they're less likely to be able to have children. We also look for interest, both interesting things about them that's different. And also, are they interested in us? And we look for emotion, because the emotion can tell us things about the safety and, and so on. So, let's have a look at the actual physiology of the eye itself. The white of the eye is also called the sclera. Um, you can call it either of those, it's still the same thing. Pupil is the bit in the middle, we know that one. And around it is the iris. And uh, one of the purposes of the iris is to make this hole here bigger or smaller to let in light, uh, uh, whether it's dark or, or so on, but also gives other signals. Also, what we have here 
is that around the middle of here, there's a muscle. Muscles can only contract. They can only pull inwards. So when this muscle pulls in, the sphincter pupillae, it literally makes the whole, the pupil, smaller. But how do we pull out in the other direction? Is There are lines going out here, all the way around here, and these are the dilator pupillae, and they're radial lines. So when you see those lines in an eye, they're pulling it out. That's where they are, they're little muscles. And it bounces out the sphincter ones. You can have a secondary colour within the eye. So you've got the colour of the eye itself, but they, there are often other colours in there, maybe more than one. Also, much ignored, but very important in a way, is the limbus, which is the line round the outside of the pupil. And the reason this is important, because if you're looking at attractiveness of a person, it has been found by, by psychology experiments that people with a pronounced limbus are considered to be more attractive, which is perhaps is uh, understandable when you see that the limbus is going to be is more pronounced in people who are younger and who are healthier. So that kind of all goes together. So if you want to make an eye uh, look more attractive, you can make the limbus more pronounced. Blood vessels can be an indicator of ill health or age or something wrong. It could be just an irritation in the eye, but they're not generally not considered to be attractive and you often want to get rid of them. Also, while we, on the whites of the eyes here, the sclera, if this is a yellowy colour, then that can be an indicator of ill health as well. So how white it is can be significant. The eyelid and this other skin around here tells us something about the eye. So this may be clean and clear and very simple, but it can also have lots of different colours in it. It can have wrinkles in it and so on. And generally the clarity of skin is an indicator of youth and health. You also have eyelashes. Eyelashes can be an indicator of health as well, uh, and particularly also age. And when they're longer, and they can indicate uh, that, because when they, you're older, they can kind of fall out or fade. But if you've got blonde hair, then they may not be visible as well. So we tend to use mascara to make them more visible, or at least some people do. You've also got tear ducts in the corner here, and those should be simple and clean. And there's also the eyeball shadow here. And I'm just going to go backwards a step here. Notice how this is white, but also but when I go forward a step, see it shades off down here, so one side of the eye is likely to be shaded, and that gives us a three-dimensional view. This is where one of the mistakes can happen in editing our eyes. If we try to make the whole thing white, it makes it look flat. And also makes it look odd because if the light's this side, this side over here is in a bit of a shadow because it's a sphere, and so you'd expect that to be darker. The eye socket can itself also have shade on it because it is inside the you know the eye socket, so the eye uh, the eyelid here and around here because you have this eye socket around here, which will itself cast a shadow, particularly if the light is above it, which it usually is. And finally, there's moisture. You can have moisture within here, which can be indicated by lighter things like white lines around the edge and so on, which can indicate that simply a person has a moist eye, but it could be that they are frightened or there could be some problem. So all these things add up and these are just some of the things because there are other things within this which can make a person look unwell. It can make them look more attractive. Um, it can make them look more powerful and so on. And we're going to work, talk about those in more detail when we look at eyes. Anyway, that's it for now and thank you very much for watching.